All right. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, so if you guys don't know, I have made a big move to reading uh, more fiction, literature, and everything else. But um, I have also been reading Hegel on the side um, as I sort of continue this journey of discovery about God and everything else. So even though I'm reading fiction and I want that to be my primary aim, I have been reading Hegel on the side. So for example, I just finished reading um, The Accessible Hegel by Michael Allen Fox. Um, I definitely... Uh, can I? I definitely would recommend this that book because, um, especially if you are somebody like me that's sort of struggling to get into the obscure and dense waters of of Hegel of understanding Hegel. Um, I think the the book Accessible Hegel by Michael Allen Fox is extremely useful. And it does its job. It does its job in the sense of that it drives you to actually want to read um, Hegel's uh, fundamental works, right? Um, so now that I've finished uh, reading The Accessible Hegel and I have uh, an acquaintance with it and in the terminology, I have been, I have started reading, I haven't finished it, obviously, because I started just started reading it. Um, the Introduction to the Philosophy of History um, by Hegel. Uh, and, and I recently put out a piece uh, that kind of got inspired by it. Now, I wrote uh, this piece on my substack in a kind of reflection or taking into consideration the you know, the common debates about determinism and free will. Now, Hegel, to kind of summarize my argument, um, I borrow a lot from Hegel here in, in the introduction to the philosophy of history, which is the way Hegel sort of understands matter, right? For Hegel, matter, the, 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 the nature of matter is outside of itself. And because of that, it is essentially always going to be deterministic, like dependent, unfree. Uh, and then the inadequacy of freedom, which he, he, he goes through great lengths to expound upon, is the fact that this idea of freedom is still an abstraction and has yet to reach a real concrete actualization. Um, so... In my essay, to kind of summarize, I basically say or point out the inadequacy of determinism and then the inadequacy of free will. And the way I re reveal the inadequacy of determinism is the fact that it's sort of, one, it only says exactly what Hegel has already said, meaning that matter itself the nature of matter is itself dependent upon forces and, and so on, right? So by nature, it is determined, matter itself. Um, but the other missing element of this conversation for, for, for the, the nature of, of, of matter is precisely because it's out of itself. And that means for Hegel, um, it still gives an, an inadequate understanding of our world because our world both, for Hegel, our understanding of the world is both um, it, it both is supplemented by matter and thought. Um, reason, reasoning, or you, you could say. But anyways, so that is the two, that is the two problems with um, this sort of total determinism that's going on. Um, now, on the side of the free will, the problem that we have with free will is precisely what Hegel reveals in the introduction of the philosophy of history is the fact that this 
freedom as idea is still very obscure and indefinite and ambiguous, leading to a lot of errors and excesses of our understanding about freedom. So that means that free will, by virtue of having the word free in it, already is subjugated to a abstract notion of freedom that is, in, in some sense, um, naive and inadequate, right? Which, when we look at the arguments from determinism, they reveal, they directly reveal the sort of inadequate, our inadequate understanding of, of freedom through free will. So, again, free will has, has two issues. One, the fact that it's supplemented by a more fundamental, it's more it's, it's swallowed up by a more fundamental notion, which is freedom. And then on top of that, the freedom itself for Hegel is not yet actualized, so it's still abstract. Um, whereas, like I said before, the problem with determinism is that it only repeats what Hegel already knows about the nature of matter, which is essentially that it's determined, dependent upon itself, like it's dependent upon other things, other forces. Um, so when people talk about the deterministic argument, all they are repeating in, in my eyes is exactly Hegel's um, point, is that this is you're just repeating the nature of matter, essentially, right? That it's determined. It depends on other forces. That's all that it is. Um, so this is why when we talk about world history, this, what Hegel defines as our progress towards self-consciousness of freedom, um, the world, our understanding of the world is supplemented for Hegel by both matter and thought. So Sure, we got the matter side uh, down in the sense of its nature, meaning like it's always going to be determining itself. The problem is, is that there's this, there's this, there's this discrepancy between um, matter determining its own self or being dependent upon versus the the gap between the subjective gap between how we understand free will um, and in a bigger sense our freedom okay um, but essentially my my main very simplistic argument in the whole article was just to show that if we take Hegel's understanding of world history seriously meaning that world history for Hegel is just this progressive, um, progressive self-conscious development of freedom to finally know what freedom is means to also actualize it externally. Um, later on, we'll, we'll see that Hegel calls this the state and everything else. But regardless, um, in order for us to understand the definition of freedom, and it needs to be actualized. So this is the progress and this is the whole point of world history for Hegel. So both Thought and matter are necessary parts of the world history, and spirit, um, for Hegel, subjugates the physical um, for, for many reasons. I, I already forget why, but, oh yeah, because it's the truth of physical is, is nothing, actually. <laughs> Which is funny, because it's, it's technically true, right? Because determinism still does not tell us anything um, about reality. Um, and, and at least a sort of total determinism does not tell us anything uh, about itself. It only it's repeating the nature of matter the way Hegel uh, is framing it, meaning everything is dependent on everything else and so on and so on and so on. Um, but so the, the summary of my article is basically this, that both determinism and free will are both inadequate, are currently inadequate um, in relation to Hegel's promotion of the goal for world history. Um, and so long as it continues to be inadequate, um, these two opposing opposites, free will and determinism, in my opinion, only leaves us to a sublimated form of what I would call unfreedom. Like, so we're, we're not free, but we're in an unfreedom. We're not yet freedom. 
Um, so this sublimated form of not freedom, not yet freedom, is, in my opinion, actually where we are currently placed. Um, now, of course, there's like many arguments, like, you know, it, somebody, you know, told me like, we should just throw away freedom completely as a, as a notion, um, that really only the negation is really what they, what Hegel meant by freedom. But anyways, regardless, um, the point of my article was that actually all that the determinism and free will debates ever conclude to, if we choose to reconcile them in a serious manner, all we get is a sublimated reconciliation of the idea that really all we have is a not yet freedom. And this perfectly corresponds with Hegel's notion of world history, at least its goal for, of world history. Um, <clears throat> now, so that, that's basically the summary of, of my article. But to, to push the conversation a little bit further in this video, um, you know, so some people don't like this idea of free will um, and uh, everything else, right? They, they don't like the notion of free will because it leads to a lot of misunderstanding. Um, and that it's really hard to even, you know, given that the current paradigm of science has already revealed so much deterministic things about human beings, you know, the fact that they can predict, you know, so many seconds before a human makes a decision, so on and so on. Okay. But here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. And, and here's going to be my argument for why we still need uh, and understand, like we still need a, a promotion of free will beyond just the ethical and the um, moral responsibility uh, is that for Hegel, he brings up this notion of, of passion, right? And before I bring up this notion of passion, I'm going to address um, the, the, the problems that determinism comes into, right? A lot of studies like to quote, uh, like to show how determinism, when, when human beings realize that they are determined, uh, they, there seems to be the opposite effect that occurs, right? Like we just stop caring about moral and ethical rules, moral, ethical, social rules, um, once we realize that we're determined beings, right? Um, and I feel like Hegel actually uh, pinpoints precisely why we still need this conception of, of freedom or this conception of free will in our minds. The reason why that is for Hegel, and, and I'll quote it right here in the Introduction to Philosophy of History, he says here, we must assert as a general proposition that nothing great has been accomplished in the world without passion. And he goes to say, there are two elements that enter into our topic. The first is the idea. The other is, the, is human passion. The first is the warp. The other is the wolf in the great tape tapestry of world history that is spread out before us. So... Why is this so significant? Well, you could interpret Hegel's understanding or description of passion as simply motivation, right? But here's the here's the here's the funny thing that is being exposed in the um, warp and woof of what Hegel calls between the two elements, right? The idea and um, human passion. What is being exposed here between the debate between determinism and free will? What is being exposed by determinism is our inadequate conception of freedom, which is simply an idea, right? That's what determinism would reveal, right? That our conception of freedom is still implicitly an idea, very ambiguous and indefinite. Okay, but if you relate to the problems that determinism comes into with moral, social, ethical obligation, this is the other part of the, the woof, the warp and woof that is necessary that Hegel points out. You notice how studies in studies that argue against deterministic understanding is that fundamentally, once human beings believe that they are determined, they start acting 
completely inverse to any social, ethical, moral norms, right? They feel like there is no responsibility then. And so the way Hegel helps us understand this is actually that we need human passion to drive this whole thing, right? So basically without human passion, there is no freedom, right? But also, human passion is not enough, and this is part of the inadequacy of free will, human passion is not enough to help us realize the inadequacy of the idea that our notion of freedom, our, our notion of free, is not yet actualized. But we need human passion as a drive to actualize it. So... To simply reside in the idea that we are deterministic beings um, fully negates the reality of human passion that is necessary to make it actual, to make freedom actual. Now, again, what determinism helps supplement and remind us is that freedom itself is still an idea, is still not yet concrete, it still resides hugely in an abstract realm. Um, so if we understand that we need both, right? Determinism helps feed our understanding of the, the you know, starts helping us clarify the understanding about the idea of freedom, right? Uh, however, free will on the other end is that human passion necessary to drive it, to drive freedom to its actuality. Um, so, so now you can see how determinism as a debate, determinism as, a, as one side of the equation, sort of is useful in stripping away our uh, notions of, of freedom, right? Our sort of naive notions of freedom and free will. However, free will, on the other end, is the passion necessary to even actualize it. That, that's like, to me, that's like the whole point of what Hegel is saying. And so I will, I will repeat this again. Hegel says it here, right? Um, we must assert as a general proposition that nothing great has been accomplished in the world without passion. There are two elements that enter into our topic. The first is the idea, right? See, determinism helps us strip away and understand that it's still an idea. The other is human passion. The first is the warp, idea. The other, wolf, the great tapestry, wolf, <laughs> the great tapestry of world history that is spread out before us. So we still need this fundamental passion. And another word for passion that Hegel likes to call, he kind of resorted to call it like energy, right? This sort of self-interested investment. If I believe that I'm a determined being, it strips away my self-interested investment, a.k.a. passion, to actually pursue freedom. And so long as we, so long as we, you know, take determinism too seriously, it can strip away that human passion, that human motivation towards the actualization of freedom. Uh, so... I feel like that that's what we have to be careful about here because in some sense, determinism will always be right because if the being, if, if us as human beings accept it blindly, um, then yes, we will be determined absolutely so. And uh, freedom will remain an abstract notion absolutely so because what determinism has, all that determinism does in a real sense is strip away the human motivation for self-interested realization of this. Now, there is there is there is one side to the argument uh, that is sometimes compelling. Uh, sometimes I, I I do like this one side of determinism when we talk about ethics, meaning that sometimes if you understand that everything is determined, it leaves room for a lot of humility, right? Like. You know, you understand that people were subjected to forces that you did not know when they committed a crime or anything. So that means people are not worthy of blaming for their bad actions or their good actions. 
um, which leaves room for a bunch of compassion uh, and care. That's that's one side that I'm I'm sometimes willing to accept, but um, in my understanding, most of the time when people believe that they are determined beings, it strips away the human passion to be self-interested in freedom. So determinism is useful in helping us progress towards a better understanding of freedom, but free will, as naive as it is, is the sole energy, the sole passion that drives um, us to actualize freedom if there is any. And I think we have to sort of gamble on the fact that we need this human passion uh, because if not, uh, it's very clear that once a human being is incredibly disinterested um, because they are determined, then they just result to a sort of... Um, the transgression of moral, social, and ethical responsibility. Um, so you, you can see here that I think uh, human passion, uh, in my opinion, is incredibly fundamental to drive what Hegel calls um, the the goal of the of, of the world um, and, and and the actualization of spirit. So I, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, of course, there's, there's many uh, things to, to add to this, but I think Hegel is right. Fundamentally, determinism strips human beings of their motivations to do anything, which is incredibly harmful um, when we start talking about, you know, ethical, moral, I mean, society in general. Um, it is incredibly harmful and can work against us. So it's very clear that even though determinism is rightly pointing out that we are not free, not currently free, um, free will is still a, a, a necessary, maybe a necessary thing to believe because it still drives as a human passion towards an actualization. Um, it's a motivation, right? People do things and believe in their ethical responsibility precisely because they're interested, self-interested in that passion to, to have done something. Um, so it requires motivation, uh, fundamentally, I would say, even though Hegel doesn't use the word motivation, I interpret his understanding of passion being driven, uh, as motivation and determinism seems to strip away in general, any public human motivation. Maybe as philosophers and scientists, we can, we can, uh, we can get by with saying, you know, I have no problem with determinism. Uh, but in the general lay populace, I would say that they need this human motivation. They need, and I think Hegel is correct, right? Without this willpower, without this self-interested investment, this energy, um, then yes, determinism will always rule um, and then possibly uh, create adverse effects in society and everything else. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it there. All right, guys, take care.